and welcome back. I'm gonna revisit a previous attempted fix we did on the truck. If you remember this piece of tubing here was our uh, fuel tank to filler neck like vent tube. And if you remember this piece was the piece that we attempted to glue back on because somebody had broke it and this goes to a, a rear vent on the tank itself and then we tried some of that plastic weld stuff in the previous video and you can see here it didn't really stick or stick too well well Scott Rods uh, when I made that video made a comment about potentially getting a barb like you see here or some type of fitting and either using it in conjunction with this or potentially just getting a barb and what I was thinking also was would be a possibility would be just eliminating this fitting together and kind of cutting it here using this barb fitting this barb into what's left on the tank and then putting this hose over it but what I figured I would try first and what you see here is a 3 16 inch by 3 16 inch barb. Uh, this was the smallest one the hardware store had. So what I want to try to do is actually take this fitting, slowly drill this inner hole here, inner diameter of what's left of this plastic piece, just big enough to get this barb in. And then we're going to seal it in place with some JB weld. Now this is plastic bonder again but you know we'll, we'll see how well it works but it says it's meant for plastic to metal and plastic to plastic. Well, So what I want to do is put a little bit of epoxy on here get this thing in here as far as I can which if we go up to about up to where the barbs end on this fitting is about where this raised collar sits where the green piece, if you remember, for the um, fitting, it snaps on top of there, and then your hose would snap onto that and basically lock it in place. So what I'm going to do is I've got the first drill bit in the drill, and I'm just going to drill the bat. I don't want to drill. I mean, we could, in theory, just drill the whole thing out like that and uh, if we make this end a little bit bigger then you know it's it's no harm no foul if this ends a little bit bigger because it just sits inside of an o-ring that you can see down in there that sits on the outer diameter of this piece so I'm gonna work on this a little bit I'm gonna gradually step it up with some various size drill bits until we can just get this barb inside of this plastic and then I'm gonna put a little epoxy on it we'll join the two together and we'll let it set up and then when it comes time to do the tank side, we'll do the same thing. We'll take what's left of the plastic, plastic fitting, and I'll bring you along so you're not going to miss it. We'll take what's left of the plastic fitting on top of that vent in the tank, drill it out again, just get the barb to fit, put some epoxy on it, and sandwich the two together, and that should give us an, an airtight fit. Or at least that's the plan. Because without this, uh, and, and the, the reason for doing this is that, remember, it ties this vent into the filler neck um, where the gas cap's at. And without this vent also terminating in that filler neck, when that gas cap is secured and trying to make a seal, then this vent isn't a part of that seal. So the concern is, is when the truck does an EVAP test, then what will happen is because that vent doesn't terminate in the filler neck and it's just sitting on the outside air right now that basically you're going to end up with some type of evap leak and then throw an evap code uh you know which in most states uh in the u.s right now and actually most countries as well you know that that's enough to get you to fail an inspection so we want that make sure that fueling system is sealed up like it's supposed to be in order to keep that from happening so we're going to give this a shot so again, I'm going to work on this piece, and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So I slowly went through the gambit of drill bits here and, and walked it up to what ended up being a six, 15 64th inch bit. 
And as you can see, it's a little bit wider on that end now than it used to be. Now, made for some kind of thin walls on here, but it still has its integrity. So the, the point was, was to go slow, drill in a little bit, reverse the drill, drill in a bit, reverse the drill, just so you weren't trying to do it all in one, one setting. But you can see now, we can take our barb, and we can fit it in up to that flat spot we were looking for. So what we can do now is that we can mix up our epoxy, get that in there and epoxy our barb in place. Now, the, the key point behind this is going to be is that we're going to have to do that same drilling technique onto the vent on the tank. So we're just going to have to be really, really, really careful uh, when we do that. And what I'm going to do is, yes, I'm not going to bring an electric drill with me down there when I do that for obviously sparky reasons plus it's a fuel tank um, these bits drill bits that I'm using which are Milwaukee titaniums have a nice shank on them as you can see there a nice octagon type shank a six-sided shank and you can put that into a standard socket and just use a ratchet and kind of use these as a set of manual bits which we'll do and I'll, I'll bring you along to see that but what I'm going to do next is mix up a set of epoxy uh, and get this bit epoxied in place. Now, one thing that we could do, um, as, as suggested, is just to, you know, get a barb, get the fuel tank in prepped, and we could just, you know, run a hose from here to a barbed end that we have onto this piece and do it that way, but uh, I want to see if I can at least get or attempt to use most of the factory hose, I guess, if you want to put it that way. But let's see here. Let me get some epoxy mixed up, and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So we got a little bit of our epoxy mixed up here. We got it thoroughly mixed. Probably way more than we needed, but we got plenty. That's what I love about these newer type of epoxy tubes. It dispenses both sides for you. So you're not guessing. So what I want to do is take our barb here I just want to put a little bit it's probably way too much I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing myself See, I'm just coating the barbs here up to the, the, the flat spot in the barb. Just making sure we get enough stuff on here that it'll glue, but not... We don't want to, you know, glue the opening shut, obviously. There we go. I think that's plenty at that point. There we go. Yep, we still got our opening through here. There's no glue in there. That's good. And, uh, yep, we got plenty of glue that scooched out the end there, so that'll be good. That'll help seal it. And just to be on the safe side here, again, probably way too much, but we're going to take a little bit more of our epoxy and just kind of put it on the outside edge here just to make sure that's nice and sealed push it down a little bit so I want some of this surface to remain so when we do the fuel tank side of it we're good yeah it's probably way too much but that'll work so what we're going to do is just let this have its 15 minutes to set up. I believe it said that it yeah it sets in 15 minutes, cures in 30. So what I want to do is I actually want to yeah right there is fine. Let me get a just something small to set this on so what I want to do is actually something like that Let's see we'll do 
that. We'll just weigh it down like that, just so it kind of hangs over the edge. But I just didn't want that to actually lay up against, you know, a piece of paper or something and get bonded to something that it shouldn't. Yeah, but it looks like it's thick enough that it's not going to drip off. So we'll keep an eyeball on that for a few minutes. Like I said, once that sets up and we get ready to do the uh, the tank part of it on the outside, I'll bring you along for that one. You know, and as long as we can, you know, again, just slowly step our bits up and get that uh, tank in or the broken part of that vent on that tank end taken care of, we should be able to put the other half of our barb in and put our vent tube in and see if it holds. And the reason why we're doing all of this is that that vent part of that tank where it's broken that's a molded piece onto that tank there there's no replacement for it the only way to replace that piece is to actually replace the entire fuel tank just to get that one vent piece in a non-broken state and i've i have researched it and the amount that you'd have to pay these days for a replacement fuel tank is just stupid amounts of money so we're going to try this first if this doesn't work and we end up getting an evap leak and can you know trace it down to it being this in particular then what we'll have to do is obviously you know either bite the bullet and get some type of replacement tank or see if we can find a 1500 with the correct tank in a junkyard somewhere that that fitting isn't broken and just steal the tank from it because the tank itself is is plastic it's it's the rest of the tank is perfectly fine there isn't a darn thing wrong with it it's just this one little vent that's broken but again when we get ready to uh do the uh underside of it and the, on the tank part of it i'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so we're back to working on that uh, broken fuel tank vent that you remember we've had since the start and we attempted the the one repair where we use some uh, kind of like an epoxy plastic weld material that didn't go over very well. It, uh, it broke shortly after reattaching that piece again. So this is the piece, if you remember, the piece that broke off that we used some of the JB Weld plastic binder and put an actual barb fitting in, drilled out this fitting to be a little bit bigger to accept that 3 16 barb and you can kind of see it down in there so basically we're putting a a barb inside this plastic fitting to kind of give it some rigidity and something to stick to so the next step is to see whether we can get enough perch in the space we've got to deal with uh, and again I'm going to use just a a ratchet with a deep well socket in the bit because these bits have some hex hex bottoms on them to see if I can get in there and kind of manually just drill um, this side of the vent opening right here uh, at least deep enough and big enough to get that barb in and then epoxy uh, that barb into place and see if that will hold because uh, again the reason why we're doing this is because um, if that vent uh, doesn't attach to the uh, gas filler cap, then when the system tries to seal itself, uh, it's not going to be able to, and it's potentially going to read that as an evap leak with that fitting being broken. And since that fitting, as you can see, is molded uh, to the top of the gas tank, you know, there really isn't a, um, a way to fix that in short of buying a whole new fuel tank, which I have looked up the cost of a fuel tank on this truck. And it's just, it's absurdly uh, expensive. Uh, I can't really find much in the generic in the aftermarket section, but, you know, obviously I can get an OEM one. But last time I looked it up, I think the OEM one was upwards of five to six hundred bucks. Uh, for a fuel tank so it's just again crazy expensive so I'm gonna get myself situated see if I can get up in there and uh, again just kind of take it slow step the bits up one by one 
because I want to drill into that, but also, you know, not drill out the side of that vent or clog that uh, vent tube up uh, would be the other thing. Uh, so again, I'm just going to go slow on this and see if I can pull this off. And uh, I'll bring you back in a bit. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing up there. Um, just I found it easier to use a quarter inch ratcheting wrench to get in there because you can see the space is pretty tight between the end of the bit and the frame rail. So I'm just holding that bit straight and just ever so slowly just kind of going in making sure it stays in the center of that hole and just like when we did this piece i'm just stepping up the bit size uh size by size until we get to the size we need uh, to get that barb to fit in there the same way it did on the other end piece and then we'll uh, then we'll make sure that hole is clear and free of any residual plastic shavings and then we'll we'll get out some epoxy and we'll go to it but uh, again just want to thought you want to see that again not using power tools here because of what we're dealing with uh, and first and foremost I'm, I'm not saying this is a fix definitely not saying this is something that you should do but this is just something that uh, I'm trying in lieu of uh, you know happen to drop 600 plus dollars on a new fuel tank for a, a single vet if this doesn't work, then so be it. That's what we'll do. We'll either get a new fuel tank or get a used fuel tank and replace it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a try first. Big much. I'll bring you back. I'll bring you back when we get ready to to epoxy that that fitting back on. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. And welcome back. So you can see we've got our fitting in there. We haven't epoxied it yet. But all we did was just kept working the drill bit in a little bit, backing it out, making sure we kept our chips and everything clear until we got it to seat where you see it seated there. So it's not exactly sitting as far back as it normally would, but this should still allow us to get the original factory um, piping on there. And then, you know, I don't know if you could see that up in there and then hook it up to the original filler neck. So I'm gonna do, just to kind of show you this here, you can see that much of the barb now fits into that opening and we could go a little bit deeper but i don't want to go much deeper than that because it's almost right at the end of this piece here before it goes into this domed area so i think that's far enough at least for our testing and uh, now that we got that in there i'm just gonna mix up some epoxy real quick and get this epoxied in place let it set up and then we'll We'll put our original, see if we can get our original hose to fit, uh, and then go on from there. Now, since this isn't, you know, since this is probably about an eighth or so an inch out from where it would normally sit, um, that pipe may be a little bit long. Hopefully it doesn't hit the wiring harness or anything on the frame rail. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I do think there was a little bit of slack in there, even with the factory pipe on it, just because of the way that it's bent. But let's get this piece in there, and then I'll bring it back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So you can see we've got our fitting epoxy. Now we're just going to give that uh, some time to dry. It says it sets up in 15 minutes and sets in 30, but we'll give that overnight. Give that plenty of time to set up before we go uh, attempting to plug our, our fitting, uh, our vent pipe back into the end of that fitting, and then go from there. I think we got uh, got plenty of epoxy on it. As you can see, it kind of mushed out the edges when we put it in, which is what we're looking for. We're just looking for that to give us a nice seal around there. And um, let's see, we did make sure that that barb fitting was clear prior to inserting it. So we definitely don't want any glue in it because one thing we don't want to do is obviously seal that vent opening up. But, uh, you know, time will tell. Um, if this works or if we have to invest into getting a different tank, but we'll, we'll give this a shot for now But uh, I'll let this set up and then I'll bring you back. Thank you much And welcome back So it's been the overnight I kind of let that set up a little bit and uh, what I'm going to do now is See about putting the, uh, the fitting back on that's the vent tube that goes from that port that end plugs onto the gas tank end on that vent port that plugs into the port on the filler cap. 
And of course there's our green locking tab. So what'll happen is this green locking tab, and you'll see it when we get it up there, but this will clip around the collar on that fitting right there. And then we'll go from there. But what I'm gonna do first is that these, you know, let me get you some light so he can see that. probably see a little o-ring a little rubber o-ring down in there so I'm gonna take a little bit of silicone paste I mean just a just a dab just a hair and put it on that repaired uh, port so that way when this o-ring seats we're not pushing it on with a great deal of force because Although we have a brass barb fitting now in the center of that, adding some you know rigidity support, however you want to call it, I don't want to put excess pressure on that when I go to push this pipe in place and you know risk cracking uh, that uh, epoxy loose. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to I'm going to bring it back. Thank you much. So just want to show you that, so you can see where that green clip clips in. Uh, to that nipple piece or port piece however you want to call it and uh, that collar that was on the end of that is where that green clip clips into the very end of it and that clip that green clip is going to clip into our pipe and the retention tabs on that green clip is what's going to clip here and here to hold this in place so that's what I'm going to work on next is get this end of the pipe uh, pressed and locked in place and then we'll do the filler tank end but I'll bring you back in a bit and there we go we have that end in it locked in place it didn't really move so it looks like our silicone is holding I should say our epoxy is holding and like I said I did put like a just a hair of a little bit of the silicone on there to help that o-ring seat without you know pushing too much pressure on this so I'm gonna take you out we're gonna go over the filler neck end and we're gonna make that connection and I'll uh, I'll bring you back and welcome back so you can see we're in the process of getting the connector on our filler tank end put in I did go through but again put a little bit more silicone paste on the end where this piece plugs in again to help that o-ring seat and it's silicone paste and it's the rubber o-ring so don't worry it'll it'll be fine it's not going to degrade the o-ring but I'm going to get in here and just to kind of give this pipe a little bit of support with on one hand and push this on with the other. But you can see how this green locking tab locks in uh, to these ports on the side here. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to work on getting this pushed the rest of the way in place and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So that's it. We got it pressed in place. We heard the locking tab lock, so these ears are locked in. So that should get it. So as long as our epoxy on the other end holds, then we should have the uh, airtight fit that we were looking for, at least so now when the tank needs to close itself off to do its evap checks, as, again, as long as that epoxy holds, we, we should be good. Let's go back underneath and all right, so this is your filler neck end. Let's go back underneath and look underneath uh, at our first connection again, just to review. I spoke to a friend of mine, and uh, he used a very similar product on a vehicle he was working on and said it has been holding up fine through driving, vibration, snow. I mean, it's not snow, but uh, all kinds of water, things of that nature, and it's been fine. So to give you another shot of that repair so you can see that epoxy that's just kind of smeared a little bit on the outside of it as we were getting it together but just to recap on that one that was a 3 16 inch by 3 16 inch uh, brass barb we took the end that was broken drilled in the piece that broke off the piece that goes into that vent tube or pipe drilled it out in steps until it was big enough to put the barb in, cemented it with some epoxy, let it set up for a couple of days, came out here and did the same thing to the tank end using that quarter ratchet if you remember. 
stepped it up various sizes drill bits until the barb would fit epoxied it gave it overnight to dry and as you can see there it's now plugged in so time will tell uh, a if it works and is maintains a seal and b if um it holds up due to vibration things of that nature now if down the road uh, it does cause some kind of an evap issue then obviously we'll have no choice at that point but to drop the tank and replace it but we'll, we're going to give this a shot first so with that being said i will let you go we're going to call this one a relatively short video in comparison to our others uh, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please consider uh, to do so. Still trying to grow the channel. If you've held on this long and uh, dealt with my rambling uh, and you find the information useful, then again, by all means, please consider subscribing. Uh, it, many, many, many thanks. And it goes a long, long way to helping out the channel. I know a lot of people say that, but it's it's true. The, the more subscribers you have, the more um, options you have within YouTube, and it, it kind of domino effects from there. But just to show you that, it's just the standard 3M silicone paste. Again, a very, very small amount, just enough to help, to, help those O-rings kind of ease past uh, to get those clips to lock in. Uh, with that being said, I'll let you go. And I'll uh, bring you back for the next one. Thank you much.